Welcome, welcome, welcome. So glad that you're here this morning for September 19th, 2020 worship gathering. Um, family, love to see your faces. Um, I hope you're rejoicing today. If for nothing else, it's because the day that the Lord has made and we're gonna rejoice and be glad in it no matter what happens, inside, outside, upside down, no matter what happens with our technology, uh, as long as we can see each other's faces this morning um, and we can hear at least one person who's gonna lead us in something, prayer or a sermon or some worship, we're gonna worship God. So I'm excited about what we have in our future coming up when we might get to see each other in a socially distanced way, which you'll hear about in just a moment. But first, I'm going to um, start us out with a, with a video, which actually is so appropriate for this morning. It's called Desperate. And, um, and I know I'm desperate for God this morning. How about you? Are you desperate for God this morning? Sometimes it takes us getting pushed up against the wall, right? Um, being in need to be desperate. But the awesome thing is we all have that in common. I'm desperate alongside you, and we're all desperate for God. So um, let's watch this video, Desperate. This week, some have experienced success and joy. Others have experienced challenge and heartache. Some have worked hard at their day jobs. Others are searching for a job to sustain them. Some have poured into their families. Others dream of having a family. Some are starting something new, others are finishing something old. They may not be us or look like us, but their stories are our stories, and their lives are our lives. And they remind us that we've all come from different places and situations. But there is one thing that isn't different about us. There's one area of common ground that we can't run away from. All of us. Every single person gathered here today is in desperate need of God. Whether we admit it or not, we all need God desperately. In our highs, in our lows, in our confusion and in our clarity, in our loneliness and our doubt, in our joys and in our sorrows, we're all in desperate need of God. And that's our common ground. That's our universal need. And that's why church is so beautiful. Because when a gathering of people is found at the intersection of diversity and desperation, well, you never know what God might do. and that is so good. Thank you for sharing that. I am definitely desperate for more of God, more to be used, and so I'm, I get excited on Saturday morning um, for multiple reasons, but mainly because we have such powerful relationships in this church, even through Zoom, and I just appreciate the individuality that each person brings to um, Cornerstone, what we do over Zoom nowadays, but um, I don't think that that has changed our bond, and I love that. So thank you all for attending and being here and being alert and ready to hear God's word. So we'll go ahead and start on announcements. Um, I think the only one that I have to do is Megan and Jesus. They have their first anniversary on the 22nd, which is, I believe, Tuesday. So we're going to play a little song for them. Are we playing or are we singing in? Playing. Okay. Yay! Happy anniversary to Megan and his Jesus. So exciting first year anniversary. So make sure to um, personally text them or call them and congratulate them. Um, definitely a milestone. So today, speaking of Megan and his Jesus, we'll be hearing a message from Jesus Melina um, called A Table and a Chair. We'll also be doing our normal offering by Stephanie Sorensen and some prayer time afterwards, along with some fellowship. So I wanna mention the three ways to give if you've forgotten since, since last week. 
Um, you can mail a check or money order. You can do it online on our website, or you can text to give, which is my personal favorite. And thank you, by the way, for giving and providing for our church and um, making us make it get possible for us to do what we do. As for our upcoming schedule, um, read your bulletin, read your bulletin, and read your bulletin. There is a lot going on. Um, this Saturday will be a busy day. We have our morning um, for We Pray San Diego, which uh, Tito and I will be hosting. We'll be live streaming, um, and you'll be able to join in and pray over our schools, and that's so exciting to me. I have a passion for kids, and I'm sure you all do too, so that'll be really, really fun. Um, afterwards, we do have the back. Back, backyard baptism. But before I go any further, we do have a message from Pastor Miles. How you doing? I'm Miles McPherson, pastor of the Rock Church. COVID-19 has been tearing our families and country apart. Fear, death, illness, loss of jobs, and the division of racism has also been tearing us apart. As our students prepare to return to school, our parents and teachers need our support. And we believe the only answer is prayer. On June 20th, early this year, 135 churches and 15,000 people gathered all over San Diego and in other states to pray. The event was called We Pray San Diego. We're doing it again. On September 26th, 9 a.m. for one hour, we're gonna come together all over San Diego to pray for our students and their families in front of the schools. For more information, go to WePraySanDiego.com. Join us as we pray for the blessing of God on all of our students, teachers, and schools. So, so exciting. Uh, if you all know me, you know this is something I'm looking forward to and I cannot wait. Um, I, I just love that we're covering um, the schools and the children and the families that uh, that are within those schools and um, I think that they all need prayer right now everyone's really struggling with doing um, everyone's becoming a teacher now all the moms are becoming teachers and the dads and people are having to adjust their schedules and so I know that they can really use some prayer for a lot of things but probably mainly patience <laughs> so and as I said earlier, uh, we will be doing the Backyard Baptism the evening of Saturday at 5.30 p.m. So we have a couple um, announcements about that. All right, so it will be live streamed on Zoom for those of you who want to join in virtually. And I know uh, many of us are very cautious to go out and be in groups and whatnot. And so feel free to live stream in. I know Anne will be sending out an email with information. Arrive between 5 and 5.30 if you are attending. And then we will ask everyone to wear a mask within uh, six feet of someone not in your household or if you're singing. Um, it's really, really important to remember that. We're going to try and um, enforce these rules to keep everyone safe um, and just do it to our best ability. We really would love to make this happen smoothly, and this is the way that we can do it. So please um, just be aware of that. And quick hugs are okay with a mask, but ask first, of course, to be polite. And um, next, we do have our virtual town hall meeting, which is uh, Saturday, October 3rd at 2 p.m. So keep that in mind. And it'll be about 45 to uh, 60 minutes long. So mark your calendars for that. We'll have lots of information to share. A, pr a prayer update on uh, my Uncle Frankie and Aunt Carmen. Um, as most of you have probably already heard, my Uncle Frankie has stage four liver cancer that has spread to his lung and his now um, lungs, and he's now at Oasis Village Care, which is in La Mesa. Um, I just heard an update from him. He's not in a ton of pain, thankfully, but he is very, very tired, and he misses everyone. He's pretty lonely, and so um, I hope everyone's shown him some love through text or phone calls. Um, I'm sure he would love to hear from everyone but you can send him cards. There is an address on the bottom right hand corner if you would like to send him a card. And um, I believe, it, Anne, is that where my Aunt Carmen is gonna be staying? 
So his address is on the left and her address oh. is on the right. Oh, okay. And, um, at the beginning of the month, um, they'll be together. He'll be moving to the place that she just moved into in National City. Oh, okay. All right, thank you for clarifying that. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break really quick. I hope this is okay, but my brother is online and it's his birthday today. So I don't know if all of you remember my older brother, Danny, but I would love it if we can sing happy birthday to him. Could give him a, a Zoom birthday. Yay. <laughs> Yay. So where is he? He's, where is on, he? he's actually on my mom's phone right now. I don't know. Okay, he can, we can. Yeah, he can, he hear, can hear us and he can yeah. probably see us, but we can't see him. <laughs> awesome. Oh, get there, she is. Would you like to see a doll dress I made? <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. There he is. Daniel. Clear your, clear your throats. <laughs> throat. Get ready. You know, we haven't done one of these in a couple weeks. <laughs> yeah. So, you know. So just to warn you, Danny. Uh, hi, Danny. Just to warn you, this is a big mess, but it's not. Okay. Okay. But we love you. Happy, happy Danny. Okay, one, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Danny. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Yay! Bye. Happy birthday, Daddy. Bye. Thank you so much. <laughs> all right. I just appreciate you all so much because I love that Cornerstone is just so relational. We are able to stop what we are doing and show our, um, our family some love. And so I just thank you all for being flexible and loving up on our members, even when we don't see them for a while. So thank you so much for, for being flexible and loving. All right. So, um, yeah. So as I was saying, you know, my Uncle Frankie's just a little tired right now. So you can move over to the next slide. As you remember, um, there was also on July 12th, the tragic accident. Um, if you remember, there was a gentleman named Bob who was attending the, the Bible study um, that I'm just going to say was attending the Bible study. <laughs> and um, there was an accident on their way to, uh, I can't remember if it was to or from Texas, but I know that. Was, from Texas. Okay. Okay. And so and unfortunately they were, kind of stuck in Texas for a while, lost their two children, um, Bailey, who's 12, and Landon, who is was 10, and um, just so sad. And I want to mention that um, and point out, because starting at 11 o'clock, 20 minutes ago, they began their memorial service for these um, two beautiful children. And so please be praying any moment that you can think of them. Um, I'm, I'm sure the family is grieving over this um, pretty hard loss. On a good note, they are almost um, the, to their goal of $250,000 to cover expenses for the hospital bills, for the memorial service, for the funerals. And so I'm sure that's going to be a, a hefty um, cost, but they are at $240,000. Dollars and six, or sorry, two hundred forty-five thousand dollars, and so they're pretty close to being there. And um, I believe you have the link in your emails if you decide to give some extra um, funds if you feel um, pushed to do that or led to do that. Sorry, not pushed. <laughs> Uh, so yes, yeah, so please keep them in your prayer as they do um, hold their memorial service today. Yeah, and I, I just wanted to add to that, that um, her pregnancy is going well, and she's still on target to deliver um, in October. So while she's grieving these two, she's getting ready also to give birth. So I just wanted to mention, just keep them all in, in your prayers. She's um, having a baby boy. Aww. All right. Thank you so much for adding that in. Um, as for prayer requests, if you have any prayer requests, please let us know. We want to be praying for you. 
Um, we love you and we care about you and want to hear what your struggles are so that we can be there for you so you're not in this journey alone. So please feel free to reach out via text or email or even through chat right now if you have a prayer request. Uh, we would love to be praying for you. So please reach out and we'll include you in the prayer bulletin. And now we'll go ahead and open up in prayer. <sighs> Heavenly Father, we, we thank you for days like this where we can appreciate our, our church family, where we can reach out in places where we, we can't be there physically. So we just thank you and we lift up all of, the, all of the things that we talked about today, starting from Alice's baptism to the Sparks family and their memorial service. Um, Father, we just know that your hand is on each of these situations. We know that through the good and the bad that you are constant. Um, your love is everlasting. And no matter what circumstances we face, Father, you are there in the midst of that. And that this world, this earth is not the end of it. So God, may we hold a hope higher than this earth, any earthly things, any earthly desires, and God, remove our flesh. So with that said, I just want to say we surrender ourselves to you right now so that we can hear your word. Father, translate our words into your words. Allow us to speak life into the church. Allow us to speak life into people, into our lives, and bring us alive, God. We pray that the Spirit would speak truth through us and uh, that we would know your word better, know your love and your plan for us. And we praise you for that, and we look forward to hearing all that you have for us today. We pray all these things in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Yeah. 
It's uh, it's good to be here. It, we were having technical issues up until five minutes ago, uh, and so that was that was a lot of fun, a lot of fun to to do with uh, my father-in-law. Um, but I'm glad that we got everything settled. We kind of had to finagle our way here, but I'm here to talk about the table, the chair, and other relationships we don't really think about. So, I've watching shows, watching movies, reading the Bible, I've, I've learned that relationships are really at the core of our being, not just our, our human being, but our spiritual being as well. And, you know, there are relationships all around us and they govern our physical and spiritual world. And so I, I hope to expand what we all think of as relationships. And so one example, well, I'm going to provide a lot, a lot of examples, but one example is the, uh, the relationship, relationships in the universe, relationships between the moon and the tides specifically. When the, when the moon is on one side of the earth, it pulls the water towards it because of the gravity that the moon creates, just because, just because of, the, of the mass, how, how big the moon is. So that affects the fishermen, right? The relationship between the moon and, and the earth affects us because it affects the fishermen and ultimately ultimately it also affects uh, the shape of the coastlines. Uh, we can also look at Earth and Jupiter, uh, another relationship in the universe. Uh, it's, been, it's been known that Jupiter will uh, fling some asteroids towards us <laughs> at times and often but oftentimes it does keep the asteroids in the asteroid belt from hitting us. And so I just want to real quick show you uh, the moon, the relationship between the moon and the tides. And 
showing high tide versus low tide. And you can see the boat is floating on water in one picture. In the other picture, it's not. And it's not because of a drought, but it's because of where the moon is located around the Earth. Um, and so one final thing about, about the universe is that there is a theorized dark matter that holds the universe together, but I'll hold that for another sermon. <laughs> um, so another relationship that I want to talk about is the relationship between atoms. There are researchers that have talked about quantum entanglement. Now, for those of you who don't know what that is, uh, they found that um, there are particles that are so connected with each other, so bonded, that when they take one particle and put it in LA and one particle put it in New York, uh, when they observe one particle spinning in one direction, the other particle will instantaneously spin in the same direction. And when they change the direction that the one particle is spinning, for example, the one in LA, again, the, the particle in New York will also begin to spin in that same direction. Um, and we don't really know exactly what causes this, what causes the particles, how they can communicate with each other over such a long distance instantaneously. Uh, but they do. We, 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 we've observed this phenomenon happening. Now, ultimately, the relationship between atoms is what makes us up physically, right? It, it's, we are made of millions and, and billions of relationships of energy called molecules. And so atoms are in relationship with each other, right? That, that's what makes us up. We, we are essentially just made up of relationships of energy. So relationships are present in our universe and they govern the, the world around us. And this is where I get to the table and the chair. So practic practical things also have relationship, relationship with each other. You know, I have a tough time saying relationship. I'm not sure why. I've probably, probably been saying it too many times. Um, but the table and the chair. Right, what is a table, what is a, what is a chair without the table, right? We, we, take, we take a look at a dining room table and in order to eat, we, we need a table, otherwise we can be sitting with the food on our laps like at a barbecue. Um, you know, we can have the table, but without a chair, we know we're not sitting and eating comfortably. Uh, so uh, that, that is one practical relationship that we can look at. Another one is our tires in our car. I need to get my tires changed, actually, now that I think about it. Um, yeah, our front two tires need to get changed. But without the car, right, the tires are essentially meaningless. Without the tire, the car can move. Uh, that's another practical relationship, relationship that we can look at. Uh, we can look at a mouse and the computer. You know, we were, we were using a mouse and a computer just now to try to fix the technolo technological issues that we've had. And so we can see all of these relationships around us. And we can see that on the bigger, grander scale, how they affect us, right? The moon and the tides and the fishermen, you know, if the tides aren't, aren't there, we have no fish and we don't have fish, we can't sell and we can't eat. And it, it, it affects our, our daily lives. And so this is where I get biblical on you. Hold on. So we have relationships with practical things as well. You know, with food, we can look at Proverbs 25, 16. When you discover something sweet, don't overindulge and eat more than you need. For excess in anything can make you sick of even a good thing. You know, we can have unhealthy and healthy relationships with food and and. and the Bible talks about that. And by the way, I love Proverbs. Uh, the way I've read Proverbs when I was young is because there are 31 chapters, I would read a chapter a day. Um, and that was kind of like a summer thing I would do in middle school specifically. And I just, I love Proverbs. Um, but we see that the Bible talks about relationships a lot, a lot. And this one specifically with food. Now the Bible also talks about relationship with money. We can look at 1 Timothy 6.10. Loving money is the first step towards all kinds of trouble. Some people run after it so much that they have given up their faith. Craving more money pushes them away from their faith into error, compounding misery in their lives. And we have, we have relationships with, with just about everything that, that we come into contact with. Some people have relationships, relationships with their cars, uh, you know, with, 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 with love, with people have relationships with 
a sex and, and, and people have relationships with the earth. You know, we, we all have relationships with everything. Um, and, and the Bible talks about a lot, a lot, a lot about that. So we also have relationships with each other and ultimately with God. Now, when we give our time and energy to these other objects, we're not really able to form a strong bond with other people or with God, right? It really, it really depends on what, what we give our energy to, what we give our time to. And so I want to talk about atoms specifically. Now, I know this is not a chemistry class, but uh, let me, let's go ahead and do a quick look into atoms. So atoms form a covalent bond. It's the strongest and most common of all atomic bonds. Now, the way this works is these bonds share electrons, I mean, these atoms share electrons with each other. Right, so there's the nucleus, which is made of the protons and the neutrons, and then there is a cloud of electrons orbiting the nucleus at um, at very, very, very uh, high speeds. And so these electrons, there's there's a specific pattern that determines if an atom can bond with another. Uh, now, for that, you need to go into your chemistry textbook and take a look at that. Um, but it's the reason your hand doesn't connect with the air around you. There's a reason why your, your, the air isn't a part of your hand, because the atoms in your hand, um, they don't have enough room to bond with the atoms in the air. And so that, that's why we have that separation. And so each atom has a specific number of electrons. It can have, so because of that, it can have a specific number of bonds. Now, sometimes it's one bond, sometimes it's four. And we can look at that as our relationships. I'm not a pastor like Mark and Ann. Um, you know, I don't have that kind of capacity. So they're the type of atoms that can bond with four, six, eight other atoms. You know, the one bond I do have right now is with my wife and I can devote all my time and attention to her and that is loving God. And here's, here's the best part, is that even when I am bonded with something else, God can still bond with us. And that's, because, and that's because God matches your energy. He meets you where you're at. Even when we have a love for money, like Levi in the Bible. Even when we have a love for lust or for power, and when we love each other as God loves us, then we're matching his energy. We get to participate in the love energy that surrounds our world, the energy that keeps this world running. Because if God is, is love, then Philippians 4.13, at least to me, takes on a whole, a whole new, new meaning. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through love, which strengthens me. But if God is love, then I can do all things through love, which strengthens me. And through love, we make a relationship sacred. And a manifestation of love is sacrifice. And so the Bible says, go love your neighbor. And I'm telling you guys that too. Go love your neighbor. Uh, but 2020 has been kind of tough. It's been tough to see love in 2020 just because of so so many things that are going on so many things that are going on with covid so many things that are going on politically in this election year uh, with police brutality with the protests it, it, it's tough to see love in those moments when when some of those things can harm us physically and harm us spiritually but we don't see a lot of love right now we see a lot of division because the U.S. has an identity issue. We see, we see our nation and we claim to be a nation that fosters relationship and community, but relationships and community require, require sacrifice. And there's a lot of individualistic and, and selfish thinking uh, that, that I see right now. And individualism looks like not wearing a mask. It looks like turning a blind eye to someone on the freeway off-ramp in need of help. It looks like trying to save your pride by lying. It looks like speaking without listening. 
mean, individualism looks like saying all lives matter in response to black lives matter. And what I mean that by that specifically is that the all lives matter movement, it didn't, it didn't start until people started saying black lives matter. It was a direct response to black lives matter. And so it, it, it's a little, it's a little, a little contradictory saying individualism looks like saying all lives matter because you're trying to be inclusive. But if we look at the context of all lives matter and realize that it was a direct response to black lives matter, we can see that we're not empathizing with one side of the matter. And so I, I do want to provide a little clarity as to what black lives matter is, uh, because there is a lot of misinformation out there. Um, so we can break down black lives matter into three different uh, key, key objects. So there's the phrase in the hashtag that first came out in 2013 when Trayvon Martin was killed. The phrase was going around on uh, Twitter mainly uh, with the hashtag uh, Black Lives Matter. And people were using it um, for that rhetoric, saying that Black Lives Matter just as much as others. And so that's just the phrase, that's just a hashtag that anyone can use. Um, and the meaning has been, the meaning of Black Lives Matter has been taken astray and raked through the mud. Um, but then we go to the movement because the phrase was first and then we got to the movement and the protest, the Black Lives Matter protest and the individual chapters in each city that operate independently of each other. So first it was the phrase um, and then we, we get the individual movements that are, that are arising in each, in each city. So there's the phrase and the hashtag, and then there's the movement, which anyone can be a part of. Anyone can be a part of the movement. I, myself, am a part of the movement, uh, Black Lives Matter. Um, and then we go to the organization. So for the organization, it's a federal, national organization. I know England has one as well, their own separate Black Lives Matter organization. And again, they don't organize the individual chapters in each city. They're just a federal organization that provides resources to anyone that asks for it. Now, oftentimes these three things can, they can occupy the same space, obviously, but sometimes they don't. And it's important to remember what we're talking about when we do talk about Black Lives Matter, whether it's the phrase, the movement, the protest, or their organization specifically, because they are separate entities, although they do and can occupy the same space. And it takes sacrifice to be able to empathize with them. You know, we praise our, our firefighters and our police officers and our military because they put their lives on the line for us. They, they all put their lives on the line. They've made the choice to go into this occupation because they see something greater than themselves. They sacrifice so much of their time and their lives for our communities, but we don't practice those same values. What, what I've seen is, is that we, 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 don't, we, don't, we don't practice the value of sacrifice. There, there's no love. The U.S. has an identity issue. We see ourselves as relationship-based, but we practice individualism all too often. You know, love and relationships call for sacrifice. John fifteen thirteen says, for the greatest love of all is a love that sacrifices all. And this great love is demonstrated when a person sacrifices his life for his friend. Now, it's not so much a physical act as it is a spiritual practice. The practice of love and sacrifice. And we can take a look at, at 1 Corinthians uh, 13, uh, verse uh, 4 through 8. I didn't put it in there. It's my fault. <laughs> it's all right. But I'm pretty sure we all know uh, 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8. For love is kind, it endures everlasting love and relationships call for sacrifice and so I'll leave you with this the 
There is a theory that we are made of tiny, tiny, tiny subatomic strings. So we can take a look at ourselves, our, our body, we're made up of molecules that are made up of atoms that are made up of smaller particles and it just and it gets infinitely smaller. But there is a scientific theory out there that the, the tiniest form of matter is a string, string of energy. You can think of a rope, right? And the individual strings that make up a rope, right? And so there's this theory that, that we are made up of those strings of energy that make up all of the matter in the universe. Now these strings vibrate. They have an energy that determines their wavelength. And so if we assume this theory, then we can assume that the wavelengths have to match for them to be a part of something greater. And God's wavelength is sacrifice. It's love. And to be tuned into God's wavelength, we have to be in relationship with each other. We have to be in relationship with, 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 the, with the earth, with with the universe, with, with, with our phones. And, and we have to be mindful of all the relationships that we have and how they affect us because they affect other people as well. Because through love, we make relationships sacred and the manifestation of love is sacrifice. So may we be in relationship with each other and continue to sacrifice ourselves for each other. Let's pray. Jesus, in your name, I, I pray that we continue to sacrifice for each other in small a way that we can, letting someone in the line before us, making breakfast one morning for the other people in our household, wearing our mask, listening before speaking. We have a relationship with, with, with this universe and, 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 with, and with each other and ultimately with you. <laughs> and I just pray that we get to continue in relationship with you by loving each other. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Um, Stephanie is going to introduce the offering for us this morning. Hello, everyone. Go ahead, Stephanie. Well, it's a bit beautiful day today. I want to thank you all for being here. And even those that couldn't be, we miss you. Um, <laughs> it's amazing how awesome God is. I mean, Jesus spoke about sacrifice, and that's exactly my topic. <laughs> I couldn't believe it when he, when he said the word. I went, oh, my gosh. Um, when I think of the word offering, sacrifice is what comes to mind. Um, I'm on limited income. <laughs> Let's get real. Two thirds of this church is on a <laughs> limited income, but that, that's the whole point. Um, this is all about sacrifice. What sacri what, what God did for us, what Christ did for us, um, I got to thinking about it, and there were three, three people in the Bible that totally came to my mind. Um, the first one was the widow in the temple. She gave all she had. She sacrificed. Second, oh, and that's found in Luke 21, 1 through 4. Then my second one was Hannah. She gave her son into service for the Lord, and that's found in 1 Samuel 1, 11 she sacrificed. Third is Abraham. He sacrificed his son on the altar. And that's found in Genesis 22, 1 through 5. Now, each of them gave all they had. Their only son, their, their, their living. And I see Hannah's as an act of worship. I see I mean, the widow. The widow's was an act of worship. Hannah's was an act of 
gratitude. And Abraham's I saw as an act of obedience. But all of them together were also an act of love and loyalty. They sacrificed so much. We're so blessed to live in this nation and, and this congregation. Through all this pandemic, not one of our members has gotten sick because of it. And I mean, I don't know about you, but I mean, you know, how can we not thank God, our Father, for that blessing? And I think that because of that, he deserves, one, our worship, two, our gratitude, three, our obedience, and then our love and our loyalty and our sacrifice. Bless you, church, as you give. Thank you, Stephanie. That was so beautiful. I, um, I love the theme of sacrifice. It's not easy, but it is, um, it's the way of love. It's, it's what we're called to. It's, it's, it is how God expressed how he feels about us through his son, Jesus and the sacrifice that he gave. I mean, Jesus didn't just become a man and then go to the cross and then like, let go of all that and he's done. He is forever what they call the theological term is theanthropist, the God man. He's forever taken on a glorified body. Like it's an, it's an eternal sacrifice that he did on our behalf so that we could live forever with Father, Son, and Spirit. So um, I thank you for um, your sacrifice. You all have been so sacrificial through this time. So many of you have given your time, um, you've given your, your resources, you've given your prayers, you've called each other, you've sent cards, you've been so thoughtful f about everybody. I feel, I always love that string theory that Jesus was talking about, all, you know, how we're all connected. And I, I feel, it's so weird. Remember last week we talked about what our word is for 2020, connect. connect? I feel more connected with you all, even though I can't see and touch you. And it's really strange to think about that. But I, can you imagine the reunion when we all get back together? Like it's gonna be a party, right? In the USA. And um, we actually have that chance if you're feeling safe enough to see each other next week. And I'm really looking forward to seeing you all next week if you're able to come. Um, we are going to be very safe. I will just reassure you. Um, we're going to take your temperature. We're going to make sure everybody has masks on. Um, but we are we are going to be sacrificing a little bit to come celebrate with Alice. And now we're not taking unnecessary sacrifices. I will just tell you that. We're going to be very wise about how we do everything. We're going to sit far apart, and um, we're not going to hang around a lot. But um, Alice, Alice is recognized the sacrifice of Jesus in her life, and she wants to go public with it. So I hope that you um, are able to come join us. And if not in our yard, you can join us on Zoom and you can celebrate with Alice there and then just give her some love and share in that joy that she's going to have a chance to share a little bit about her journey with Jesus and how she came to know God and why she wants to give her life to God. So I'm excited to hear about that. Um, but as we conclude here today and go into a time of prayer, I was just thinking, um, you know, some of the stuff that the stuff that Jesus said about Black Lives Matter might be a li might have ruffled your feathers a little bit, but that's okay because um, what he was calling us to is a level of sacrifice. You don't have to agree with him, but what but what he's calling you to, I I implore you to agree with, and that is sacrifice, and the sacrifice um, that many people have gone through in this country, um, are people of color. Um, we're finally recognizing um, glo globally even um, that, that there's been a lot of wrongs that have been done to um, our African-American brothers and sisters. And so a lot of people are feeling called to sacrifice and go out and march or 
um, or make a difference. And I love what Miles McPherson said. If you all remember, we've done a couple things with Miles, actually a lot of things with Pet the Rock Church. They're, they're a good church. Um, and one of the things was his book, The Third Option. Do you all remember that? When we did the Third Option event and we had a bunch of people come? In his book, in The Third Option, he calls us to find the places that we have in common and honor each other. Not just tolerate each other, not just endure each other, um, or like smile and then talk about each other behind our, their back. That's not what he was saying. He said honor. It's easy to honor somebody that agrees, agrees with you, isn't it? No sweat. That's easy, you know, because you think alike. How about honoring somebody that's not like you? How about, how about honoring, how about developing a relationship with your neighbor who doesn't believe in God and honoring them? Not looking down on them because they don't believe in God, but honoring them. Like that's sacrifice. That's laying down your life for the other. And I just, I love some of the things that Jesus said um, that the manifestation of love is sacrifice and God is love. That is what this whole thing is about. Um, so I pray that as, as we go into prayer, I'm going to pray that this week we, we can find places to sacrifice, to lay down our lives for people maybe we don't see eye to eye with, people maybe we are upset at, or maybe they hurt us or offended us. Hey, that's a good place to sacrifice, right? To, to call out for reconciliation. Um, people that upset us maybe. You know, the Bible tells us to not hate our enemy. He says, love your enemy. That's sacrifice. So um, let's go ahead and just take a deep breath and go into a moment of prayer as we get ready to conclude our service. Um, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, thank you for calling us to sacrifice. And not just calling us, but you did it first. You showed us how it's done. You sacrifice every day for us. Because we are so messed up. We're so fallible. We make mistakes. Um, we say we love you and then we turn around and hate our neighbor. Lord, forgive us. We just come before you and we just confess that we just don't measure up. And that's why we're so grateful that you sent Jesus. Because he made that way for us. Because we can't measure up. We're just broken and Lord, even when we're doing the best we can, we don't, we're not perfect. And you, your law calls for perfection. And so we're so grateful that you sent a way for us to be covered by the blood of the lamb so that we can stand with our head high, our shoulders back and say, I am a child of God. Thank you that you include us. Thank you that you've saved us and you continue to save us each and every day. And my prayer for my brothers and sisters on this call, whom I love so much, is that you will call them this week to a greater level of sacrifice, to loving first the people in their own home, because sometimes they're the hardest ones to, to show how much you care about them. I know we love the people that we live with and our family members, but sometimes we're, they're the ones we're the least nice to. And I just pray that you'll call us to step it up and to really love well this week. That we'll sacrifice for our neighbors, the ones out, right outside our home that live near us. That we'll sacrifice for uh, those that are in need. That we'll get on our knees and pray for those who are without all over the world. You know, and we, we do pray for the firefighters who are still battling all the blazes on the West Coast and all those whose homes have been flooded for the third or fourth time on the East Coast. And Lord, we just pray for those who are going through tragedies and we pray for the Sparks family who um, is laying to rest their, their two beautiful children and with a memorial service. Lord, there's so much to pray about and our prayers are a sweet sacrifice unto you. So we give them to you now. We give you our lives. We pray that you will, Holy Spirit, prod us to love well by sacrificing this week. And we pray this in the power of Jesus' name. Amen. Now, as we go into our final song, um, this is amazing grace. 
that he laid down his life for us, as the scripture that Jesus used in John 15. Amazing grace and an amazing love that's given so freely. rejoice for what he has done for us. So let us all unmute our mics and with a great cacophony of our voices say our mission statement together. Ready? One, two, three. 
We will live with Jesus. And all God's children said, Amen. 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 Well, hey, bonus, you got out early today. So you can thank uh, Jesus for that. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Hey, yeah. <laughs> Love the sermon, Jesus. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. It's, uh, it's been on my mind for a while. Uh, when that was a mixture, I even rushed through it, but that was just a mixture of several uh, devotionals I've given. And when, when Mark and Ann asked me to, uh, to give a sermon, I was like, what am I even going to speak about? I've spoken about so many things. Well, what can I speak about? Um, I'm not a pastor like them, so I, I don't have a much experience with the bible uh not as much as them and so yeah it's 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 something close to my heart just because it's that's what i've read what i've seen is that relationships are really at the core of who we are you did a great job thank you for sharing thank you thank you i'm just i'm so glad that 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 and the auditory went together so perfectly <laughs> yeah it did i was so surprised i was like oh my gosh awesome it was great it was <laughs> great oh man and and that and mine was well, I would say it was done weeks ago. I mean, when I first told Ariana that I was ready, mm-hmm. and then it was weeks ago that I had really. This oh my so it just man, <laughs> right up. yeah, it lined right up like, with the song <laughs> and the sermon and the offering. Wow, that's that's great. It's uh, God is yeah. good. Yeah, God is good, and all the time. All the time, God, God, is, God is good. Is good. <laughs>